All right. So next up, I watched. Uh, I I scratched some more movies off my to watch list. Um, but this time it was only two, as opposed to like whenever 17. I yeah, <laughs> whenever I decide to watch some movies, I do like six. I, I do like I pick a weekend where I don't have anything going on, and I watch like five or six movies that weekend. Um, so this time I watched The Florida Project, which is a 2017 movie. Uh, this movie made me feel some really complex emotions. It It's kind of hard to describe. Uh, so The Florida Project is a movie that... So it follows... It, it takes place in a project in, the floor, in Florida. So like a low-income housing... I All think right. you can even rent a room overnight. I, I didn't know that's how they worked. Um, so it kind of functions like a pseudo hotel, I guess. Right? Yeah. I guess the, I guess the residents are paying for their houses by week or something, mm-hmm. um, which actually fits into the plot. And a big chunk of the movie follows the shitty kids that live in the complex, and the mother of these kids don't ever stop them from just raising hell. So they're just super annoying. Super uh, badly raised kids, but they're also really intelligent and street smart. And um, Willem Dafoe plays the manager of the complex, and he's just he's just doing his best to keep it together. Usually, you see him in like a nefarious role, but uh, he's just so sweet in this movie, and he's definitely the the best part of it. And the movie focuses on this little girl whose name escapes me right now, and her mom. So, this mother is where the complex feelings come from because she's just a terrible mother with just terrible parenting, but she really cares about her daughter. So, picture this trashy, like, 20-something, maybe early 30s at at best, uh, a young mother. I'd say she's probably in in her mid-20s. Um... And she's just a brat. She's super immature. She's super, like, genuinely trashy. And she's taking care of this daughter. And she lets her daughter do anything. And she sets a really bad example for her daughter. Where, like, she has the daughter go... uh, She has a friend who works at, like, a Waffle House. And she has the daughter go there, like, every other day to get... to So the friend can, like, sneak off some free waffles for her. Like, and if she doesn't get her way, she'll bitch and, and scream and throw a tantrum and she uh scams people by like buying like selling these shitty perfumes in front of like established businesses and at one point she like steals a guy's disney pass because it's in florida and they're like right next to disney that's a actually important part of the movie mm-hmm. um anyway she's just terrible and she's just scummy i guess is the best word to, I, I wrote that in my notes it's like scummy mom um, she just schemes her way through life. And you feel really bad for the kid because her mom is so kind of shitty, but she also loves her, and the kid is happy, so I guess it's... I, it, I don't know how you're supposed to feel at that. It, it depicts this really good image of, like, poverty, and yeah, it's just a really good movie. Uh, it goes directions I wasn't expecting. The mom really goes pretty hard to provide for her daughter, but it's still like a scummy mom, like I said. So the the climax of the movie is really emotional, and um, this probably has the most jarring ending of any movie I've ever seen. It, it, <laughs> do, do y'all care if I mild spoil this yeah. ending? Yeah, I will ahead. survive, I'm uh, sure. And then even you're though, tell it to me, and I'll be like, oh, I wish I didn't hear that. I feel like Bradley would enjoy this movie and not Joe. Um, so there's that. So near the end of the movie, uh, can I? I'm trying to see if I can talk around this. It it basically ends with the little girl running to say goodbye to one of her friends, and it's like this is the last time I might ever get to see you. And it's like she's crying, and the camera is close up on her face, and it's devastating. And the little friend grabs her hand. And they run to Disney World, and the camera, like, the way the camera is filming, it switches to a handheld camera. And they just run into Disney World, and you never see them. Or is it land that's in Florida? Joe, you're the Disney expert. It's Disney World. Boiled. And that kind of fits, like, this theme of the movie where, like, the kids 
kind of at the end they run to a fantasy, but in in the end they still have to go back to their reality. Uh, yeah. Really good movie. I give it a four out of five, and that's all I got to say right. about the Florida Project. Um, okay. Spe- speedy reviews. So yeah, next, we'll go back to Disney World later and Pet Cemetery. But yeah, Pet Cemetery is after this next one. I know. Which is uh, I also watched Vice. Uh, came out in 2018. It's a film about the life of Dick Cheney, uh, former vice president of the United States under the George Bush administration. Um, I'm sure everyone here is acquainted with him, and if you're too young, uh, you can look him up. Why he was the fuck a... Are you listening to us? <laughs> we say cool. bad words. You really shouldn't. Uh, yeah. So this is like a really cheeky, fun look into a, the stealth leader of the United States for a while. Um, so I'm just going to preface this by saying I didn't look up the accuracy of this movie. Um, the movie says they try to be as accurate as possible. So anything I'm going to say about Dick Cheney right now and his and his doings and George Bush and, his, and Dick Cheney's wife... Um, they're all based on the movie's portrayal of them, and if you come up to me and you say, actually, that wasn't accurate, I'm not going to fight it. I'll believe you. I'll look into it. it. This is just my... Based on the movie, this is what I get. So, it shows how Dick Cheney, he starts off as like this college frat star who doesn't do shit. He's in Yale, and he only got there through connections, and he flunks out. He gets super drunk and gets caught driving and gets like a he gets like two DUIs, um, and he somehow climbs his way to assistant of like a powerful man, and then he climbs his way to assistant chief of staff and then to congressman after that, and he runs in the Nixon campaign and uh, who was after Nixon the big Republican after uh, fucking Re- Reagan um, yeah. so he's. He's in all those campaigns. He's in the background. He's steadily rising. And it touches into some really interesting things and, like, why Nixon or why Cheney was such a good politician. Um, You kind of have a lot of sympathy for him early on where you can see he has good intentions. And even, like, in his first few jobs, he's like, what do we believe in? Because he's seeing how, like, corrupt his mentor is and his mentor just walks away laughing so the point is you don't believe in anything you kind of lie through your teeth and you rise up and you do what you think is best for the country and you can see a lot of his decisions are the decisions of a guy who thinks he's doing the best right so for example during like he uses watergate as an opportunity where any republican touched by watergate is fucked right but Cheney wasn't, so him and he gets, like, his old mentor who he hadn't worked with in a while, and they get to ride that wave as the only clean Republicans kind of thing, and that's how they make it into Congress, I believe, is the how it went. Um, and then, like, during the 80s, there's a boom of Republicans that, like, save the image from the Watergate scandal, so Republicans are back on the table, so to say. And it's just, the whole movie is told in a really fun way. Uh, where it doesn't take itself too seriously, which some people, I, I went up and read on it, uh, some people don't like how the tone uh, clashes from like funny to serious. Uh, I thought it made it for an enjoyable way to tell this movie, where like midway through the movie, uh, Dick Cheney makes a really important decision, and shooting at the, guy in the face. no, the shooting the guy in the face comes after. Uh, basically, one of his daughters is gay. And he's like, if I run for president right now, I, I believe it was president, that's going to be a problem because my daughter just came out as gay and they're going to attack me. So either I have to denounce that while I'm running because I'm on the Republican Party or I'm not going to run. And surprisingly, he doesn't run. He does the right thing. Mm-hmm. And then the movie is like, Dick Cheney then went on to manage his oil business and raise Labradors with his wife, and everything went well, and credits are rolling midway through the movie, and then it dials it back. And while he did do the right decision for his daughter, he then got brought back into the game because George W. needed a senior guy on his side. Yeah. And that's how he gets roped into that. Um, and then there's like this scene that's told in a Shakespeare soliloquy. And then uh, when he's meeting George Bush, this movie portrays George Bush as the biggest idiot. It, it's, uh, Sam Rockwell plays George Bush, and he's so funny. 
Um, and while he's meeting him, he's like, you can, uh, there's like a voiceover for what he's thinking of while he's meeting George Bush. And like, you get to see into his mind and stuff like that. Um, it's just, it's told in a fun way like that. But then 9-11 happens, as it does. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the tone takes a darker turn. Um, Cheney, like, oh my god, it's it's so, co- like, shit gets so complex around 9-11. And it's kind of crazy how everything turned out this way. Where you're like, Cheney really is scared. Like, he's visibly shaken in the movie as 9-11 happens. And his wife ha- asks him, are we at war? And he says yes. And she asks against two. And Cheney doesn't know how to answer that. So you can kind of... Th- that's one of the problems I had with the movie. They kind of rush this part really fast. Because at this point, the sympathy and the motive... Like, the sympathy you've built up to him as, like, just kind of a s- sleazy politician. But he had his heart in the right place. It all kind of goes downhill from here. Because he's like, okay, we need to interpret the law so that the president can do whatever he wants so that he can send troops out to fight this war and then the public they did a lot of tests with the public and the public wasn't liking the fact that terrorism is a nebulous threat they had to pin it on a on a country and they could have pinned it in iran but iran was a uh fucking what's it called they were an ally and Cheney was in an oil business, and Iraq had a bunch of oil fields. So there's this kind of like, we're going to find this link. We're going to find the tiniest possible link to the to 9-11 and Iraq. And we're going to use that link to convince the public that we need to go to war against Iraq because we need a, the public would rather us go to war against a country than an anomalous terrorism. And because he does this, he inadvertently gives another guy power, and that's how ISIS is made. So, <laughs> so it just becomes the craziest mess, and he wages this war in Iraq for like these nebulous motives and with these skeezy ways. And it just it's really fascinating. Um, I'd also give this one a four to five. I know some people have problems with the tone. Uh, and even I have problems with how they pace some of his motivations, but yeah, that's what I got to say about Vice. I think both of you would like this movie. The the way you describe it reminds me of a lot of The Big Short. I don't know if you watched it's, that. Word. It's the it's the same director. I remember hearing. Yeah, the, I, I I think I'll probably like it because I really like The Big Short. I haven't I seen thought, The Big Short. Maybe. Oh man, it's it's real good, and and it, they sit down and they really, hand, like lay out like this is what happened during the ha- housing market crash. Like this is why this happened. And and they um, they do a lot of fact fact checking and they do it in a very like um, it's a very it's a black comedy which I feel like Veep it mm-hmm. not, not Veep, <laughs> Veep, Veep is that yeah Vice Vice is a black comedy I'd say that yeah yeah Vice Vice it like a uh, like it's it, it's like it, it puts a humorous top humorous spin on a very serious and t- and subject that affect a lot of the, people negative. The funny part about him shooting that guy, speaking of that, is like this is already in his downward trend like his bad arc and then he never apologizes for shooting the guy and no, the guy apologizes to, to Dick Cheney instead. <laughs> so yes. It's just like Jesus Christ. Yeah, I think that happened in real life too if I remember correctly. God. Yeah, I, I, I'll probably check it out when I can. Good movie. Mm-hmm. Bradley, you were were you gonna say something, or are we good to move uh, on? No, <laughs> I'm uh. All right, I'll just uh, listening. Thought I heard you. Okay. Uh, Let's talk about-